Welcome back guys, welcome to another episode of this Subway Skater and also um, the Google Play services. Today we're going to be having a look at Achievement and Leaderboard. I think we can get them both done fairly quickly, we've done that in the past. And it is a fairly easy process if you've been following through the whole login phase and also fixing your Google Play services. If you haven't done that, go back and uh, check the last two videos in which we integrate Google Play services and make sure we're logged in and it works. So. The first step we'll have to do today is to head over to the website. So I'm on the Google Play console. As you can see, those are my game services, not my application, my game services. Make sure you don't um, mistake these. This is the one I'm currently using for the game. It is the new one I published for testing purpose. And we are going to go down here in achievements. Um, so we're going to start by achievements, but leaderboards and achievements are something we'll do at the same time since they're fairly similar. Let's go and add an achievement. Now you got to give it a name. Um, in my case, I have did put some achievement in here. I have some ideas of what I'll be doing, plus I've made some thumbnails for it. So, here they are. Five, five achievements, something really simple. First is to log in. So when you first log in the game using the Google Play services, you'll get an achievement. And then uh, you have like coin achievements. So very, very simple stuff. Um, just so we can get started, of course, you can add more and put it at the proper place in your logic. Right, so first one is going to be the login. Uh, description user was able to log in the game so I'll just do one with you and then um, I'll go offline and do the rest so you don't have to sit here and watch me do everything but that's basically it for one achievement you put a name description you put the icon and then you have to choose whether it is a incremental achievement or not so this means that whenever you do report the progress in your achievement um, say you're in the middle of a game you have an achievement that says you have to play the game a hundred times and every time you finish one game, you can say, well, I'm going to report the progress on this achievement, add one more time to it. Eventually, uh, once you reach 100, it is going to unlock the achievement for real. So you're allowed to have incremental stuff uh, that just is calculated on the, on the actual side of Google Play services. So if you close your app after playing 10 games, when you come back, that achievement is, gonna, is still going to be there at 10%. So this is what incremental achievements are for. Initial state, you can choose whether it is revealed or hidden. So, I mean, whether you um, publicly display how to unlock this achievement or not. Um, in terms of point, you can have a maximum of a thousand point. I think this one's very simple. Let's start and give 25 points to the user. You can also choose where it is in the list. So that is it for this achievement. Let's go ahead and see if we can publish it because right now this achievement is in draft mode. To publish the achievement to your user, you need to publish the changes, and that's for the whole um, Google Play services again. So like I mentioned, I'm going to go offline just a little bit and complete the rest of the achievement, which are like only, only four of them, so I'll be right back. All right, so I am done right now. I've added the four other achievements, and as you can tell, I've also changed the points to 50, 100, 150, and then 200. So they're, they're more rewarding, um, you know, the harder they get. And uh, something I'd like to mention about that is that you can only have a maximum point of 200. So that's the maximum amount you want. Um, because when you do publish this, uh, they're going to have a minimum of... They want you to have a minimum of 5 achievements. So um, you can't put a single achievement that gives a thousand point. And uh, here we go. So we have our game right here. We have some points. You don't have to fill in the all the points. So right here we, we have um, 525 points out of a thousand. But you know, you can leave it here. So it does not really matter if you do fill all the points or not, they're going to give you your 525. So let's head over to the leaderboard. Something really simple again, let's do the add leaderboard. Now for the title of this one, I'll call this one high score, that's the high score leaderboard, but you can have multiple one. You can have a leaderboard only for coins, you, you could have a leaderboard only for uh, how long you stay alive in the game. It really depends what you want to do, but I'll have a single leaderboard for my game. Now it asks you what kind of uh, you know formatting would you like? We want to use um, we could be using numerics, number of decimal space. Let's go ahead and put none actually because we don't we have ints in our you know score. We don't have any float. We don't have any decimals. So we're gonna put that on zero. Um, icon same thing. They're gonna ask you for icon. I don't really have any for that. But hey, guess what? We'll use the same one. In our case, we're going to go with larger is better, simply because our numbers are incremental. Um, enable temper protection. So this is going to, I'm not quite sure what is the algorithm behind it, but it's going to try and remove those, um, those scores are 
put there using memory editing or any kind of hacks, I believe. Uh, you can also have limits, so don't allow score below the value 10. And you, you can also have a maximum. Uh, list order, there's only one leaderboard, so I'll leave it at 1. Click on save as draft. And now we have everything to get this working. But before we go any further, we actually have to get the resources. Now, for some reason, those are the hardest for me to find. Like, If you know where to find those resources, please let me know in the comment section below. But the only place where I know where to find the proper resources is under Achievement. And then I click Get Resources. This is going to print this code over here that adds up um, all the achievement we just put with their achievement string and also the leaderboard. So I'll just copy all of this in Android. Oh, actually, let me just grab it manually. And then we'll head back in Unity, go under Help. Or is it under Help? Oh, sorry, Window, Google Play Games, Setup, Android Setup, and we'll paste it in here. Now we have all of this done. Remember the name of your constant class. In my case, it is RP. GPS for running Pingu, Google Play Services. Let's hit set up. And everything's going to be great because we already went through that. If you do have errors, you have to go back in the two last videos and make sure you don't have any. So our game knows about all these achievements. It also knows about the leaderboard. We're going to head over to the publishing. Make sure we republish this because we have we have a little bit of thing here. We have achievement and leaderboard it has been. It's really fun because they tell you exactly what you've done. Um, great, let's publish those changes. Publish changes now. And uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, everything is published. Okay, so it has been published and will be available to your customer within a few hours. I think it's actually going to be instant for us. I hope so because I'm in the middle of recording this and it better work in the end. But we will give it a try. So let's head over to our game manager and start implementing those directly in our code. And what I mean by that is we're going to need some callback, we're going to need some, um, you know, some more in those section here. So if we want to display those achievements, it's very, very simple. First, let's check if we are connected or not. Uh, just as a security, but you know, you can't click on the achievement button if you're not connected. But in case we are not, so if social user authenticated, uh, if we do, if we are connected, we're going to do social show achievement UI. And it is really that simple. You don't have to do anything else. Let's copy those four lines of code, put it in inside of the leaderboard as well. It's the same thing for leaderboard. So you just do show leaderboard UI. Now, um, not the tricky part, but like the hardest part of this is when you, you go and you try to report the progress or report the score of these. So what I like to do is to create a public function. This is in my game manager. So everybody has access to it. Um, I do a public void, unlock achievement, and I take in a string as a parameter. That's going to be my achievement ID. This is something that is fairly easy to get, and I'll show you exactly how we do it in a moment. But I do social, report progress. In my case, I am not going to have any incremental achievement, so it is fairly easy. Um, I'm going to put that on 100% right away. So. What are those parameters? The first parameter they ask is the achievement ID. Good, we received that in parameter, that's perfect. Now, this is the progress. So, like I mentioned before, if your achievement is to, um, if your achievement is to open up the game a hundred times, you're gonna put one in here. Progress is actually a number that is a hundred base, so this is gonna be one percent completed every time you call this function. But in our case, we don't have any incremental achievements, so 100% every time is going to do the job. And then you have a callback you can put. So we're going to do a lambda um, operation here, say boolean success, because that's what this callback returns. And then we'll open up the bracket and have some code running just like this. So um, once we're done reporting the achievement, we receive the success callback. We can check whether it worked or not, uh, but in my case, uh, you know, like I don't have anything to do if it doesn't work, so I'll do a debug.log achievement unlocked. You're also going to receive a little pop up from the Google Play services to tell you that you did unlock an achievement just to give that extra, um, extra feedback in case it does work. 
Now, um, this is where you would put your code, whether it worked or not, and you would use it using the success boolean. So this is this is your true or false telling you if the call was successful or not. So that is actually all you need for unlock achievement. I'll show you how to use it a little bit later on when, once we implement um, the thing in Subway Skater. Now I know that for people that are not watching this for Subway Skater, you should be ready to go right after this leaderboard call. So public void report score, and that's going to be int score. You could also use the uh, the string leaderboard, sorry, leaderboard ID, and you know you make your own function here. In my case, since I only have one leaderboard, I'll just hard code it directly in my social dot report score. Again, very same, very similar to what we've just done. Um, this one's going to take in your score, so whatever we send it here as a parameter. Secondly. It's gonna take in your leaderboard ID again. This is something that um, this is something that you're gonna have through parameters if you have multiple. If you don't, this is where the resources comes in handy. We have a constant class called RPGPS for running Pingu Google Play services. And now you're gonna see that since we did the update, the um, the Android setup, you're going to see that we have all our achievement popping up right here, and those are all equal to constant string. The leaderboard high score is no different, so we can use it like that. And then again, we have this amazing little callback we can use as well to know if it worked or not. And that is pretty much it. Just hang around for a second. I'll open up the RP GPS class. Leaderboard changes, or sorry, let's do reported score to a leaderboard. Let's also add the success value at the end. Can't type today. Great. Um, let's actually open this one up so you see what happens. When we did the Android setup, all we have is some code, you know, copyrights, and then we have public static class, so a public static that holds more public static. So once you do RPGPS, you can have access to all of these and the only thing that those are is simply strings. <laughs> it, those are just strings. And as you can tell, they all have their custom ID and they're being used in different ways in the game. But those are the exact same that you'll find on the website. And this is why Google Play Services is able to tell which one is which. So you should be able to see them here as well. Those are the ID and this is what you use to unlock Great, so that's pretty much all we needed to do today for those people that are not following Subway Surfer. Now, if you are following Subway Surfer and you'd like to implement those five achievements, I'll just do it right here and also uh, implement the score. Very, very useful. Let's actually have a look. Where exactly would you like to implement those score? We have the get coin over here. Um, and it says diamond, anim, set trigger, get coin, coin score, plus, plus. So I'm assuming every time... <laughs> it's been a little time uh, since I haven't touched that, but every time we do coin score plus plus, this is where we could hook up our check if we unlocked an achievement. And here we'd say if coin score is equal, equal to 50, actually, we'll do a switch statement. Yeah, a switch statement is a little bit better since we have multiple of that. So we'll do a switch. Um, using coin score, oops. So in case coin score is 50, in case coin score is 100, in case it is 150, and in case it is 200. Now, if it is not any of that, if it's 49, if it's 30, if it's 201, we'll use the default, which is simply nothing actually so we do we do nothing if if the coin score is not um like that now for some awkward reason my coin score is actually a float so we'll just say that nothing happened remove it from there and put it here instead and that's the end okay so what happens is if we do hit 50 we're going to call our unlock achievement and this is how we get our achievement rpgps achievement collect 50 coins in that case Let's go do the same thing for the other two. So, achievement 800 coin. 
if you were a hardcore person you could like simply send in the same exact string you see on the website the Google Play uh, website but you know they make those resources for us they make those nice static class for us we're just gonna use that instead and that's all we need to do so this is gonna call our unlock achievement and this is going to report the progress of our achievement and tell us if it worked or not next up we have the login achievement that we should put under on connection response so if we are connected let's go ahead and say unlock achievement and again RP GPS login and that's all we need to do for the achievement we're gonna head over to the on def to do the re uh, reporting of the school so we can be checking if that's a high score that could be it uh, if it is a high score we can send it else we could just send it all the time so this is up to you really um, I'm gonna go ahead and just send it all the time since there's really not it's really not that bad so I'll do a report score and we'll report what is the score here that's just score like that great so cannot convert float from int oh right so we're gonna make sure that we cast this as an int first this one is a float for a reason because our float uh, not our float but our our score is incremental um, with decimals since we have the modifier that just mess up the fact that it could be an int so uh, once we do report let's make sure we cast that as an int and I think guys that's pretty much all we needed to do today so we went through all the achievement all the leaderboards well our single leaderboard uh, with this code now in the next part of this video I'm going to be testing it out directly on my device other than that I think that's all you need um, in, the, in the next episode, sorry, we're going to be looking at the Google Play services for saving on cloud. And this is going to be a, um, a big episode, but I'm going to try and make it as simple for you guys so you can implement it in your own games. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll be going through the testing phase. You can stay around or you can leave now if you want. But yes, I am going to hook up my device and build this directly to my phone see if we can have it working because there is no way for us to test unfortunately there is no way for us to test here on um you know on this editor so i'll be hooking up my phone right now it is hooked up i need to sign in and provide the password i'll do that so i have the application running right now i'm going to hit the login button as you can tell we successfully logged in we have an achievement unlock that is the login achievement with some xp the XP is going to make me level up on Google Play. As you can see right now, I'm now level 3. And um, then I went ahead and I, get, I went inside of the game. And as I was playing the game, I tried to collect 50 tokens. As soon as I got my 50 token, again, achievement unlock, collect 50 coins with my little graphic I uploaded on their website. And we leveled up once more. So we have all these pop now in our game. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Let's go over and try to use our UIs. Okay, so we have the application running again. I'm going to press on the login button. So our buttons are hooked up to the game. They're right here. But when I press on them, we have some weird error that says um, it's waiting for the UI. And that's because I've already called it in this session. What's going on right now is the fact that since we just did those modifications on Google Play Services, the website, we are trying to show UI that does not really exist just yet. We have to wait until it propagates. But those buttons are going to be working eventually in the next few hours so this is actually where i'll be ending today's episode we've done a lot of things we've been looking at achievements leaderboard and uh making them pop up as well so a lot of little fixes too with the android service uh google play services so guys i hope you enjoyed next episode we're going to be having a look at the cloud saving and uh, cloud saving is going to be a big one so bear with me we're going to have some theory before we go in that and uh yeah so that's about it thank you so much for watching make sure to check out the weekly challenges they're now live on the Discord channel, you can have some more information. You can also check that out on the website. And, um, you know, follow us on Facebook. Check out what we do. We really appreciate all the help you give us through likes, through comments, and through interaction, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be catching you in the next episode.